And with us right now, we've got Dr. Bobby Grossi. And Dr. Bobby, you're the owner of Grossi Dental and Wellness. You're the host of the Destiny Is Not Hereditary podcast and the author of two books, which we'll talk about. Well, Dr. Bobby, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for having me. Thank you so much. So what are dentists doing during this time? <laughs> well, me, I'm, I'm actually in the office now. I'm actually seeing emergency patients. So in this kind of crazy time right now, we're seeing, I, I feel it's our obligation to help the healthcare system. Uh, some, some of my areas shut down, but it's more important that they're coming to us for dental needs and toothaches and stuff like that, even other, other health needs and keeping them away from the hospitals right now in this time. And that's, I feel it's our moral obligation, our duty to, to do that part. So I'm here to see emergencies right now. Yeah. And, and how is that going? I mean, in terms of like, are your clients coming in and obviously there's probably more precautions that you want to take just to reduce contact and. Yeah. I mean, obviously we're doing social distancing the best we can. We're seeing about a patient an hour right now. So we're trying to, I kind of limit it, but actually it's been, it's kind of crazy busy, which is kind of, who would have thought that, right? Yeah. But there's, but uh, you know, as far as us in the health field, we kind of always taken viruses and bacteria pretty serious. So everyone says, are you doing something really different? No, the only sad thing is, is we can't get glove and mask when we need them, you know? Oh. But we have, I actually am, uh, we're, we're actually working on some things too. I own a dental lab as well. And we're working on creating masks and I'm, I'm kind of using this as a problem solving time and maybe helping create better masks in the future. I, I think we gotta, I think we all need to learn from this moment and say, okay, we didn't protect ourselves enough. And, and so, I, you know, I'm working on a solution for that as well. Just better masks, better, better equipment. Yeah. You know, what's really amazing and I think has been some of the most um, enjoyable things to see is how inventive people have become in solving problems. And, you know, as much as we kind of often look to our governments to bail us out and kind of fix things, I'm seeing some really amazing things come from the private sector. You know, people, uh, you know, I just saw Bosch, you know, creating uh, ventilators uh, and being able to produce them en masse, uh, like, and just solve major, major uh, 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 situations that, uh, you know, that, that put people at risk. So, uh, so thank you so much for, you know, kind of your innovation, you know, and how, how we can help out in our communities. Um, you know, what are the things that we can do to support one another? And, you know, when, when we do that, we'll, we'll absolutely kind of mitigate that, um, you know, the, those spikes and the, those, those really painful situations that can affect a lot of people if we all kind of just pool our resources together. Uh, that was a perfect word, resource. I think I think we're, we're all becoming a little bit more resourceful. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. we're, it's amazing when you get a bunch of masterminds together, when you get people trying to solve the same problem of how much how much momentum you can get. You know, sometimes we take things for granted and, and that everything is just going to work out. But now you got a whole, I don't want to say this is kind of a blessing in disguise because it's a terrible thing, but the, the country is kind of rallying around this and you get people that are trying to solve some issues that probably been overlooked for a long time. So it's kind of cool, actually. Not cool in the sense of the coronavirus, but you get what I'm saying. Right, cool. yeah. So cool the are, that people are working together. Yeah, another question I had is, are dentists able to perform telehealth? Yes, like virtual consults and stuff like that. Is yeah. that what you mean? Yeah, sure, yeah. Sure. We, we, we just got, it just got passed down by the ADA. I mean, it, you know, I was talking about doing it anyway, and I kind of got yesterday, we got the, passed down from the American Dental Association that now, yes, we could do uh, virtual health, virtual consultations, whether it's through FaceTime, whether it's through Zoom calls, I mean, we can do that. Mm -hmm. And that's, I reached out to my patients already, but yeah, we can do that. You know, I, I wonder if the future, because I've, I've talked with some people that, uh, you know, there there's devices that are coming out that you could do kind of basic tests, you know, certainly, you know, thermometer and they're they're connected, they're in Internet of Things devices, um, you know, that they have, you know, cameras and other things. You can kind of check certain things, you know, but I'm what I'm waiting for is like some sort of device that, you know, you can send out to a patient, they can put it in their mouth and it will do like some sort of, uh, you know, test in there to check for you know, gum disease or whatever it might be, right? Some of the things that normally we've had to do just visually in person, you know, but you know, the future of, uh, you know, technology and remote, uh, you know, uh, servicing telehealth, I think uh, I, I'm kind of anxious to see what the- what Well, the you know, it's funny you mentioned that. And just today alone, I had a patient who, we don't know if they have oral cancer or not. And because of this kind of pandemic going on, she's not able to get the 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 see the specialist right away when it's pretty serious i mean young girl 18 years old and i was able to with my technology 
talked to, I mean, I'm from Michigan, so I talked to the surgeon in Ann Arbor, and then, and then I got talked to another oral surgeon in Saginaw. So like, here we are, we're miles apart, but yet we're connected at the same time. We're going over this case with this patient, and we're, we're coming up with a strategy and plan virtually, really, that would have probably taken a long time, which I'm actually excited about this technology. And what we're, we're thinking of once again, outside the box, but I mean, I'm able to get answers, bang. And so these people that are living in fear, the uncertainty, do we have to wait on this? We're kind of coming up with a plan and we're, we're expediting this plan in a safe way, obviously social distancing, but, but we're making sure that we follow the right process, but we did it all virtually. Like he could look at my 3D scan in two seconds and we're, it was just a really, it was kind of a cool way. And I've never interacted with doctors like that before because we're all on the same team. You know, that's why my book's called Bridging the Gap, right? I'm trying to bridge, bridge the gap with the healthcare system. And so it was just really cool to see it all come to light. And because you, you mentioned it, I just thought it was ironic that we just did that early huh. with doctors. Yeah. As the, you know, obviously, so you're the, you're the owner and founder of Grassi uh, Dental and Wellness. And mm -hmm. um, do you have an office about how big is your team? We actually have, well, I have four here now because of what's mm -hmm. going on, but we have a, a staff of over 20 employees, which is mm -hmm. great. My biggest ever was about 30, but we're about 20. We yeah. have, uh, we have a, uh, man, we're, we're, we're very blessed. We have 15 yeah. operatories and we have a great team that rallies around us in the community. So I'm very blessed. As a leader, uh, what has this uh, environment meant for you, uh, for your office and like what things have you, uh, how have you communicated or how have you worked with your team? And, you know, uh, again, kind of contingency planning, that sort of thing. I'm, I'm just wondering what sorts of activities you've done as, uh, you know, as people kind of look to you to kind of set the sail, uh, you know, how, how have you dealt with this? Well, I, you know, I mean, I, I kind of went to more of the, the leadership role, you know, just kind of working on people's psyche. I sent them messages through virtual messaging. Um, I'm talking to my staff, just like I would talk to you on this podcast. You know, I'm making sure I'm giving them motivational messages. I'm making sure they get their mind right. I'm making sure that they're protected financially and, and also just having the support of the community. So even with my community, you know, whether it is a Facebook post, just letting people know, look at we're in this together. Um, we're all gonna get through this. We've been through darker times before, right? We're gonna get through this. And just really focusing on, you know, maybe I tell my staff, utilize this time right now. Like, I know this is bothersome. I know we're all going to get through it. The lending institutions are going to work through everybody with this. We're all going to get through this financially, but utilize this time to do the things that you maybe couldn't have done before, that you mm -hmm. think you didn't have enough time for. Utilize this time to work on your family relationships, working on whatever it is that you wanted to work on, even if it's getting in a fitness program, like utilize this time because we always have not enough time. Everybody says that, right? Now we have time and utilize this time to, to make yourself the better version of yourself. And, and, but I do that through messaging, through just a simple text message. Sometimes I'll get my phone up and do a video message to my team, just always engaging them to make sure that they know, first of all, I love and appreciate them. And secondly, they're not forgotten. And just because we're at a distance right now, we can do things to stay connected. And that's what mm. I'm working on right now. Yeah. You know, in addition to uh, being a, a dentist and, and having your own practice, uh, you're um, kind of a motivational speaker and you've, you've taken a holistic approach to dentistry where you're, you're actually, I mean, you're, you, you, it, it, you know, my vibe from you is that, uh, you know, you want to care for the whole patient, not just, you know, the, um, the symptoms of, you know, of, of, gingivitis or something like that, right? <laughs> you, you, you really care for the whole patient. And and that also extends into your role as a leader. Can you, can you kind of share a little bit about that? Yeah, so I mean, the, the, the quick, a quick cliff note version. My grandfather, the reason why I got into dentistry to begin with was because my grandfather passed away of throat cancer. He kind of raised me with my mom. And so um, I always wanted to make a difference. Initially, I wanted to be an MD. My wife's an RN. She says, do you want to be married to your page your whole life? I said, not really. So then I picked dentistry to be more of a nine to five thing. But what I did is what I realized is talking through my patients and, and just kind of looking at how the health and the whole body was connected to dentistry and our impact. So I think of dentistry as almost like the oil change for the body. Like people that have automobiles and cars, they get an oil change so that their engine runs more efficiently. And I said, okay, well, if dentistry is kind of like the first oil change of getting the health and immunity working up, what else is tied in from sleep patterns to to just how the body responds to certain chemicals, how the body responds to 
to materials you're putting in their mouth. So then I took more of a holistic approach that if I don't want to treat, ever want to treat symptoms. I want to treat the disease because if I can eliminate the disease of a body, we can minimize you know, medications, we can really solve the problem. So I'm a more problem solver, guys. And sometimes it's just solving people. Like there are times I won't even work on a patient and they'll tell me about their personal problems and I work on their mental health and get them right. Because we deal with phobias every day. We deal with people with have other health issues. And my role in medicine is not to always solve the problem. It's to diagnose and then help them get the, the solution. And if it means not seeing me, that's what it is. But that's how my approach has always been is just kind of how can I, what is really going on? What are they asking for? What's their concern? And what is my role to get them there? If it means I don't treat them, it's still my role. I just get them in the proper hands. Does that make sense? Yeah, for so, sure. And of course, that philosophy extends into your role as the CEO of your organization as well. Correct. Correct. I mean, so that's where my team is. So like people always say to me, you know, my employees are just as much a part of this whole thing as, as I am, right? So without a team that's running the same mission, I can never accomplish what I'm trying to accomplish, which is provide total health and wellness, right? But I need a team that, that believes in that and, and, and embodies the same thing. So I focus on them as much. See, it's never, it's never about me. And, I, and I'll say this to everybody else, like mm -hmm. just because my name's on the sign is never about me. It's right. about us and them. And so mm -hmm. my whole approach is if I can build up my team, if I can, if I can help them through their mental state right now, or if I can help my patients through all this, or I can influence them in a better lifestyle, health and wellness, then I've accomplished a pretty good thing. I mean, I, like I said, uh, uh, I can't do this alone. And I need a team that rallies around me and, and kind of has the same viewpoint and vision. And that's what I love about my team and, and, and my patients is we kind of have the same philosophy. So like minds, like, like minds, right? It's pretty easy. Yeah. I mean, but, but I just think it's, I think we're on a bigger mission here. And I think that's what I love about not only my staff, but even my patients, we all kind of bleed the same, you know, it, we, we bleed the same way. As a dental practice, you guys have had some really good success. And uh, what do you do from a marketing or, or, or visibility standpoint that, that other practices might not be doing? You know, I think, I think originally it was just more word of mouth how I first started. Then I realized, you know, there's something else out there. So I started doing more, you know, Instagram videos. I started mm -hmm. doing, just putting myself out there, you know, doing community events, doing free dentistry. That was probably my biggest thing I've ever done was, I've been doing it now for 12 years. So I take it for granted, which I should never take it for granted because we're trying to solve a big epidemic, right? But but mm -hmm. I, I started going out in the community, just giving back to my community, making sure we're doing free days of dentistry, focusing on my staff. Then my staff started, you know, marketing, really marketing for us, but really making the patient or the client, I like to say, feel like they're part of something bigger. So from paraffin waxing of the hands when they come in to giving them the not generic water, like everyone laughs, like everyone hands out water, but understand what that message says. If you hand out, uh, no offense to Sam's Club, but if you hand out <laughs> Sam's Club water versus Fiji water, it's a perception to the patient, right? Mm. It's, it's all perception. So my staff at once, they wanted to cut costs and like, we're going to hand out the Sam Club's water. I refused to let them hand it out. I said, that patient is not a generic patient. That patient is so much more to me. You hand in the best that you think is the best. And so I've always believed in just over delivering in all my services. I don't care if the service was free. I need to over deliver. I need mm -hmm. to make sure we give them more, the value that they came in here for. That dollar amount shouldn't matter. It's it's your over delivering whatever it is, whether it's giving them Fiji water or the new water, Panavia, whatever it is. But I mean, I'm just saying we always, even down to the water you hand out, I hand out yeah. wine, like you're gonna laugh, like I hand out wine bottles. I, they don't drink it in here, but when they walk in, if they like wine, do you like red wine or like white wine? That's a gift. So we constantly <laughs> are looking for ways to make sure that patient feels like this is not a dental office. This is, this is a health and wellness office that we just happen to focus on dentistry. Does that make sense? Yeah, for Thanks sure. For and thank you, by the way, for not handing out Dasani water because that, that would not be good for business. <laughs> no, <laughs> Everybody no. hates Dasani. <laughs> well, it's too acidic. If you really want to know, Dasani is very acidic. Wow. So is Aquafina. So no, this is another side note. Not all water is equal. And that's where people have this misconception. I'm drinking healthy water. No, you're not. You're drinking acidic water. And and that and and so Aquafina is really acidic. Dasani, I'll probably get blasted by them, whatever. But they're acidic. So when you start, you want to get more into the alkaline waters. You're talking the Fiji's, the Avion's. There's other ones out there, but 
be careful. Not everything you read is accurate. Like they'll even say a water pH is eight. It's not. Me and my daughter, she did an experiment in school and I have a list of all the waters that are actually good for you. The good, good water that's relatively inexpensive. Yeah. Nestle. Nestle is a good water. From really? A you know, and it's more water. alkaline then? Yes. Ah, oh, the now more alkaline, the more alkaline you can get your bloodstream, the more alkaline you can get, whether it's water, whether it's eating greens. I know we're not going in this direction. But uh -huh. if you do 60% greens, just like you do 60% waters, the more alkaline your blood can be or neutral, the less chance you ever have of getting infections. Wow. So now compared to like a coffee, so coffee is going to be significantly more acidic than like a, a water, right? Yeah, I mean, it, well, it depends. I guess what water are you, you running through your coffee? Yeah, right, like, right, I right. Know. I mean, if your water at your house is pretty good or it depends on the water they're using, really. I don't you know, so now do do this. Uh, by the time this podcast episode airs, <laughs> do some social media uh, posts about the uh, acidity of yes. what you drink. And yes. I think that would be a fun chart to, I'm sure, I'm sure someone's already designed it out there. Uh, pass, I'm going to look for that after our conversation because now I'm really curious about, you know, kind of the acidity of uh, the, the, the things that I'm consuming. You know, it's funny though you say that somebody might already get it. They, they, a lot of people have done a lot of things. You just don't reinvent the wheel. You just do your no. twist on it. It all works. <laughs> yeah. It's about awareness, right? Yeah. And so, yeah. you know, and oftentimes, and this is one thing that I've experienced is, uh, you know, we might think of something that we know and assume everybody knows it because right. that's just kind of the world we live in. Uh, the reality is, uh, you know, it's like, you know, my wife and I each studied family science, family therapy in, in college. And so we assume that it's easy for me to assume that people know like what reflective listening is. And usually right. like nine times out of 10, I mentioned that people are like, what? Like, you know, where you say, you know, someone says you allow someone to say something and then you say, you repeat back to them. So what you're saying is dot, 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 dot. And people are like, oh. Yeah, it's like, you didn't know that? <laughs> so, yeah, so it's, you know, but but yeah, it's oftentimes, you know, when, when we are perceived of as an expert or a thought leader or subject matter expert in something like that, you generally don't need to get very advanced with your audience. And in fact, you know, I, I generally will sometimes, you know, whatever it is I'm teaching about, I try to keep it at a, you know, a fifth grader level. Like if a fifth grade class could understand it, kind of track with me, that's kind of the level that I want to speak at because, you know, then people can kind of follow along and they're politicians that actually do this very well, uh, you know, and, um, you know, it, it's, it resonates uh, if people can feel smart when they listen to you. Well, that's why I use the analogy of the oil change for the body, right? I didn't get into all the science behind cleanings, right? I, didn't, I yes. just said, look, it's like the oil change for the body. And you go, oh, I get it. Especially yes. being from Flint and Genesee County, they understand. So there's a lot of people, even, you know, we could go on about health insurances, but that even with you, when, you know, you're a smart guy, Josh, and when I said Dasani's acidic, your eyes got like this big, like, oh my God. I mean, here's a guy who that makes sense. studies stuff. I'm like, I'm, I didn't know that. Like, that's kind of cool, you know? Yeah, yeah, for sure. Well, awesome. So, uh, so Dr. Bobby, um, what would be a great way for people to engage with you, your website? Uh, is there any particular piece of content that you'd really love people to check out? Well, I mean, obviously, you talked about my, my podcast, Destiny's Not Hereditary, but also just, just uh, Dr. Bobby J. Grassi is my Facebook page, but Grassi Dental Wellness, you got all my links to all that stuff. My personal website is drbobbyjgrassi.com. That's more the motivational side of me and the dental side of me. So there's, uh -huh. there's a few ways you can get a hold of me. Yeah, you have some really great social media content. And again, uh, the podcast, Destiny is Not Hereditary. Uh, what do you talk about on that podcast? You know, it, it originally started out as I was, uh, my kind of story, you know, I kind of gave my story where I came from. Like I said, I had a single mom in Flint, Michigan, raising three kids, making $18,000 a year. My Oof. dad was a drug addict. And so it was one of those things where I kind of put myself through school and, and it was basically giving people, originally it started with just telling my story, giving them hope, understanding that, you know, you're not the, we're, there's a few steps I can teach you but through my life of, of how to do it. So I believe that people can plant their own seed. So many times I hear from people in life that, you know, I'm this way because my mom was that way. I'm this way because my dad was this way, or I, I, I don't know how to love because I wasn't loved. And, and I, mm -hmm. I don't want to call BS on people, but the reality of it is, is you're that way because you choose to be that way. Mm -hmm. You know, you are making a choice to stay that way. And so I believe that just because you are destined 
or you're in, you were raised in this family doesn't mean that that's the way your destiny is meant to be. How many people have you heard that go from rags to riches story or go are homeless? Josh Jacobs from the from the Raiders, the running back, he's actually homeless, but now he's a professional athlete. So what what is in somebody's mind that gets them to go from here to here? And why are people that have come from a great you know financial backing or family life why do they start here but end here? So that's kind of was my podcast is kind of working on how to what makes that person take one way or the other and how can we help solve the solution and yeah, then it kind definitely. of morphs in morphs in a little bit to i have a lot of family and friends that suffer from anxiety and depression so yeah. it also talks more about how to handle those situations yeah yeah and it's you know and i think that um you know my approach to that is you know if you can find purpose in that you know we're we all have our things right we all have you know our disadvantages we all have some of us have circumstances that are just tougher than other folks right. um but can we find purpose in that and that's kind of like the victor frankl man search for meaning it's you know what is the purpose that you get out of uh, that you that, that you get from this experience and you know having um spoke for tony robbins organization and you know attended a lot of his events um you know this um you know that if we want to blame that's okay, but blame elegantly. In other words, if you had a rough upbringing, you know, uh, you know, my uh, my view of it today is, you know, my parents did the absolute best with what they knew at the time, and was it perfect? No, of course not. I'm not a perfect dad. I'm not a perfect parent. I'm far from perfect. And uh, so, you know, but for me to look back at my parents, it's really easy for to bl for me to blame them for things, but in reality. You know, it's like, I kind of like who I am right now. And so because of my upbringing and who I am, that made me who I am today. And I'm actually pretty grateful for that. And so if they, my dad was a little tough on me, uh, you know what? I survived and I'm pretty thankful because it made me, you know, whatever personality traits right. I have right now that I think serve me well. So that's, that's kind of my view on it. So yeah, cool. Yeah, I'm going to... I'm a subscribe. That sounds. I'm really interested. <laughs> cool. That, and that's kind of how I did. I mean, it, so it's funny. I have a brother and I have a sister, and, and we all look at things totally different. I have a twin sister. My twin sister and I look at things the exact same way. Like I, somebody says, "Would you ever bring a terrible?" No, it's awesome. I mean, the fact that I had a dad who was a an alcoholic, the fact that I had a mom that struggled financially, I knew exactly what I did not want to do. Like mm. instantly, I knew exactly what problem I was going to solve in my own life. Okay, I'm not going to do this. So every decision I made, people say, how did you become a dentist? I literally, every decision I made in my life, I would say, what would my dad do? And I did the opposite. Like, no, it sounds geez. really corny. <laughs> like that's what, yeah. but, but understand that the, the reason why I have as much drive is yeah. I utilized what's the so-called weakness. I don't even know if it's a weakness. I utilize right. my life and my upbringing and I utilize it as my strength and going, okay, I know exactly what I want. Where my brother, God love him if he's listening to this, it is what it is. He will not let go of that past. And, mm, and instead yeah. of embracing the past as a positive, he embraces it as a negative. And 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 we're the same family, same upbringing. So yeah, I, you know, I just it's all how you put meaning to things. You know, Tony Robbins says it too. It's what do you associate your meaning with? And is yeah. it pain or is it pleasure? And I can associate that downside as as pleasure because I know that it's it's made me who I am today. And that's. I think everybody, including you, Josh, who, who goes to that next level, because we all have stories, it's mm -hmm. can they link pleasure to it versus pain? And if they can mm -hmm. link pleasure to it or a good learning from it and just move on, then you can become successful. But my, look at it, I'm just more of a cheerleader on the podcast. I give people some ideas. I try to tell them real life situations of even in my practice of the day, you know, but that's all. I, I just want to help. <laughs> at the end of the day, yeah. I just want to help. Some good David Goggins philosophy you just uh, shared there as well. So, yeah, well, Dr. Bobby, uh, again, Dr. Bobby Grassi, thank you so much. Again, you're the owner of Grassi Dental and Wellness. Uh, and uh, the website for that is uh, Grassi Dental and Wellness.com, G R O S S I Dental and Wellness.com. And, uh, and then as well, you got some great social media. And then, of course, the podcast you can listen to right now is destiny is not hereditary and you could search for that right in the uh, podcast app that you're doing we didn't even get to the books we'll have to bring you on another time <laughs> no problem so, josh thank you yep dr bobby thank you so much for joining us thanks have a blessed day man thank you